This is the MateBook 13 from Huawei, and if you can't tell just by a quick glance, this is meant to be a direct competitor to that new MacBook Air that Apple just released last year. So today we're gonna to take a look at whether or not this laptop can rise above those similarities and be more than just another copycat device. Before we can get to that, let me get to some of the basics about this laptop and give you sort of an introduction of what you're getting with the MateBook 13. Like I said at the beginning, this does take a lot of inspiration from that MacBook Air design. It even has the same space gray color, which apparently Apple hasn't trademarked because that's what they're calling this one. Um, but it is that dark silver aluminum finish that we really like and um, it's not quite as refined as that MacBook Air. It does have a little bit of give in areas. It's not built out of that single chunk of aluminum, but overall it is a very premium device and it feels premium to hold in the hand. And before we open it up, we do wanna take you kind of along the edges because the selection of ports here is kind of interesting. Like a lot of laptops that are in this thin and light category, you're just getting USB-C um, one on each side. You're not getting Thunderbolt 3 though, unfortunately. We would have liked to see that, especially when you get into those higher priced configurations to see a Thunderbolt 3 port like you do on other laptops. But here it's just two USB-C ports and one for video output and one for charging and of course a headphone jack. But let's open it up because that's where the exciting stuff is, especially on the MateBook 13. The star of the show is definitely this display. It's a three by two, 1440p touch screen display. And we really like to see all that stuff come standard in the base model. Typically you get a 1080p version, non-touch. Not with the MateBook 13, all that comes standard. And just in general, that three by two aspect ratio, it's really nice if you're used to a 16 by nine or 16 by 10. Coming to this, you just feel like you have a ton of screen real estate. It's perfect for multitasking and just getting work done. You can just see way more of the work that you're actually trying to do. So we like to see that on this device and I think you're gonna see a lot more laptops transition over to that three by two aspect ratio in the future. Next up here is the keyboard. This is a really solid keyboard. I really enjoy the typing experience here. More travel than I thought would be on this thin and light laptop. And I believe this is the same keyboard that's been brought over from the MateBook X Pro. With one exception, the webcam is no longer hidden underneath one of the keys like it was on that laptop. And instead it's been moved back up top to above the display, which is really where we all want our webcams to be. As for the touchpad, this for me is one of the downs, the cons of this laptop. Um, I know not everybody cares as much about these as I do, but I found this experience to be not the greatest. I found that when I was doing detailed, precise work, like dragging windows or selecting text, my finger would skip a lot, and it just doesn't have that fluid, smooth tracking experience that you really expect to see on a high-end machine. This has really felt more like a Chromebook or a cheaper Windows 10 laptop. That's the kind of thing you'd see in those. And I really wish uh, Huawei hadn't cut the corner on that in that way. Like I said, the webcam has been moved back up top, which is great, but uh, it's not an infrared camera, so you're not getting that Windows Hello facial recognition. But Huawei has included a fingerprint scanner that's built into the power button that works really well, so you can quickly get into Windows 10. In terms of performance, there's really nothing to complain about on the MateBook 13. It comes with totally updated specs uh, and components. You're getting an eighth gen Whiskey Lake Core i5 or Core i7 quad core processor, which should give you plenty of power for productivity, multitasking, everything you need. It comes also with eight gigabytes of RAM, both versions, and you get options of either the 256 gigabytes or the 512 gigabyte storage, and that's that SSD, NVMe, super fast storage that you're gonna wanna see in high-end laptops. The one interesting thing that this one has that a lot of others don't is an option for discrete graphics. It comes with an option for an MX150, and that is the 25 watt version. We've only seen this particular GPU in the Razer Blade Stealth before, so it's kind of a new, um, a new approach to putting graphics into a thin and light form factor like this. And the result is, it's definitely increased gaming performance. I mean, you can play Fortnite if you reduce the um, settings down to medium, you can get it to be pretty smooth. And for a lot of people, that is gonna be totally worth it. That is the selling point of this laptop. It's way cheaper than the Razer Blade Stealth at $1,300 for that uh, MX150 config. So I mean, for a lot of people, that's, that's what they want. And I think this laptop does that at an affordable price. 
However, it does have a pretty significant compromise in my mind, and that is in battery life. Like the Razer Blade itself, the 25 watt MX150 just, it does something to this machine and it, it pulls a lot of juice out of it. And so I found that for this, um, this thing, it gets around five, maybe six hours of light usage. If you're gonna be using it for more intense programs or a lot of multitasking, you're gonna see that dip even more. And in my mind, that is just not up to par with the competition that's out there. And that's just a trade-off that you're gonna have to decide upon because I think some people will see that and think the game performance is worth it. They wanna have a laptop that's thin and light, that looks sleek like this, but can also play Fortnite. And for those people, you know, this is gonna be like a pretty good option for them. But I think for the average person, that battery life is just too big of a um, compromise to make um, when you're choosing a laptop that's supposed to do everything for you. Especially when you're paying, you know, $1,200, $1,300 for that uh, Core i7 MX150 version. So, you know, I think for those particular people out there, this could be a good option. And for everyone else, I think you're probably going to want to go with something else that has a little bit more battery life. So that's the Huawei MateBook 13. If you're interested in this laptop, I really recommend you check out our full written review, which you can find in the description below. And while you're here, leave us a comment and let us know what you think of this laptop. Is this something you're actually interested in checking out? And are you willing to pay a little extra and sacrifice some battery life for that MX150 graphics card? Let us know and hit subscribe for more videos from Digital Trends.